Hi and welcome to this video series from Sonic Academy. My name is Sammy and in this video we're going to take a look at Fracture on an acoustic drum loop and then we're going to break down the architecture step by step so you know what each part of Fracture does. So we can take that understanding and reduce the chaotic aspect and get something more or less predictable. So right now we've got a dry signal of just the drums and I'm going to bring in the wet amount So now we're hearing just Fracture. So first I'm just going to take this slider down, I'll explain that later. And I want to focus on this up here, this is the buffer module. Now a buffer takes a sample of your audio and repeats it. In this case, it's taking um, 229 milliseconds of audio. As you can see, I can define how much time it takes here. So right now it's just taking very small snippets of 22 milliseconds. And then it feeds that into the repeater section. And this defines how many times that snippet which we took here is going to be repeated. And when it reaches the number, say 19, it's going to take a new snippet. So if we just have it on one repeat, we're basically getting continuous audio. We could modulate this for some interesting glitch effects already. If I take a very small snippet and a lot of repeats, you can hear it's basically cramming in loads of these little snippets together. Now at a very small size, it doesn't take long to get to say 80 repeats, but if you have a longer snippet, it's going to take forever. So just bear that in mind. We're going to go back to one. So I can show you the ratio. Now ratio is basically the pitch, the speed of the snippet that we took on playback. So at full it's like twice the time, go down to halfway, it's half time. Incidentally if you need finer control just hold the control button and then move the mouse so you can get very fine control that way. Now once we go down to zero, there's kind of nothing there almost. And then when we go into negative, we're basically in reverse. And here we're at reverse double time. So if I hit Alt, it takes me back to the default position, which is 1. Now you'll notice here we've got a modulator. This is an LFO. We've got our different shapes here, sine, triangle, saw up, saw down, square, and sample and hold. So square is an on-off kind of signal, uh, sample and hold is steps, but they are random. And of course you probably know what sine, triangle, saw up and down do. So if I just take the pitch, you can hear the sine wave going up and down, taking that pitch up and down with it. And if you think of these as valves, letting the modulation signal come through to this section here. This is where we control the speed. Now, unlike this section here, the LFO can actually be synced. So if I was to go saw down, so this can be synced to your track quite easily. And then saw up, which just give us the opposite effect. And square is on off, as I said. So let's just do this. Now we can modulate these parameters too. So as you hear, it can get a little crazy using this buffer module. The key is to really have an idea of what you want to do. A little bit of forethought can really go a long way. So I'm going to bring these down again, and I'm just going to have it go back to a single continuous stream of audio, and I'm going to move on to the next module. This is very straightforward, it's just a filter. 
into your resonance. It doesn't self-resonate. But it's a nice enough filter. Again, it can be modulated with the LFO here. Here's high pass. This cuts all the frequencies in the low end of the spectrum out. So the higher I go, the less low frequency content. And bandpass is similar, but uh, it's sort of a low pass here, and then a high pass here. And in the middle, it's got just a band in the middle of the frequency spectrum where audio can come through. Now I'll show you the sample and hold. You can hear those random values. And Notch takes a sort of bite out of a frequency. So let's, if we put it here, right in the center, there's gonna be a big dip in the frequency spectrum. If I modulate this with a sine wave, you can really hear that. This determines the Q value of that notch. In other words, how wide or narrow it is. It's a pretty good effect for uh, drums in particular. So I'm going to turn this off, which brings us to the final module. And this is a very straightforward delay. You bring in the mix with this control here. So now this is 100% wet. It's controlled here in milliseconds. Again, this cannot be synchronized, which is part of the fun of this plugin. So you can do it by ear. And here's your feedback amount. You have a very short delay time. You can get this kind of musical comb filter. Again, fantastic on drums. And this can be modulated. So again, if we take sample and hold, you can get a very musical, purple strong kind of sound. So it's pretty mad. Now if things go crazy, you can just hit that and it'll take the feedback right out of the equation for you. Now up here you may have noticed this menu bar. If we click on it, it allows us to rearrange the order of these modules. Um, it doesn't actually change anything on the display, so you do have to refer to this to remember where things are. But you can see in this mode we're going filter first, delay second, and then buffer third. And in this mode it would be delay, buffer, and then filter. So for me, the trick to this plugin is to have some kind of idea as to what sound I want to get out of it and how do I go about it. For example, if I have a short sound, I may want to extend it using the delay times and the feedback. So I would take delay and then maybe run it into the buffer to get some more repeats out of it, uh, speed it up, slow it down or reverse it. And then finally, maybe use a filter on it to get some texture. So let's try that out real quick. So we're going delay first. Let's get a long sound. And now we'll go to our buffer setting. Let's just hear that as a continuous stream. Let's turn this off. So what we're hearing now is basically just this delay portion. So we could bring this down to halftime. and try to get a snippet that's in time and repeat it. So that's pretty neat. And we can take a filter and see what we can do with that. Now it's a fairly slow sound, so maybe I'll speed it up by using the filter with resonance. Let's edit extra movement because it's going at a faster rate than the buffer. Maybe I could modulate the pitch.
Now I'd really like to see what the delay sounds like on the end of this chain. So I'm going to go with buffer, filter, then delay. We got some nice spooky Halloween sounds here. Let's try Notch. Let's try Bandpass. Let's try modulating the delay slightly. Let's modulate the repeats. And the time. And the buffer size. Let's try some different shapes. Now let's try a different order again. Let's go delay, filter, and buffer. So that's an example on drums. So in the next video, I'm going to take a look at some melodic content and some vocals and see what we can do there. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.